Intel stock jumping 12% in December after the company announced a new line of AI chips. And joining us right now is Pat Gelsinger. He is the CEO of Intel. And uh, Pat, welcome. Hey, it, thanks it, for being here. What a great honor to be on the show with you. Well, it is wonderful to have you here. I, I want to talk about your stock and the things that are driving its performance. We just mentioned what happened in December. I mean, you had an impressive year. The stock was up about 60%. And it was because of two big things that were pushing it. One, I think, is this idea that chip sales are going to increase as you see an increase in PC sales, hopefully. The second is just this idea of the foundries that you're building and what that's going to mean, too, with AI kind of built into the like. So let's break it all down. First of all, um, PC sales have been down for eight quarters in a row. What's, what's going to turn the tide there, and when does that happen? Yeah, I think this year, and people, I think, expect it to start a little slow but accelerate as we go through the year because you're hitting a natural refresh cycle. You're four years after COVID, so that's normal, a four-year cycle. But uh, there's also a Windows new operating system coming out, end of life of older one. Again, that's always a positive. But the big thing for us is AIPC. Right. And I've described it like Centrino. And if you go back in time, we had created Wi-Fi. I helped create Wi-Fi. And sort of nothing happened for a couple of years. And then we launched the Centrino platform. And all of a sudden, if you were a coffee shop, you had to have Wi-Fi. If you were a hotel, a business. And it changed the PC. You, know, you went from Excel as your key application to the browser, right, and the Internet and connectivity and changed the form factor and use cases. And we think of that like the AI PC. Right, it's going to drive new applications, new experiences, new form factors. And I believe there's a budding excitement for what that's going to do to the PC category starting this year, but continuing into the next couple of years. And obviously, we announced uh, Core Ultra, our AI PC flagship product. As uh, you know, the, the, the starting gun has right. now sounded. We are, we are off. All right, let's talk about the foundries side of things, too, because this has been a really exciting story. You guys are making plans. You're in the works with some of these factories that you're building, uh, not only in the U.S., but in other places, too. But this is a long story that plays out over a long period of time. Um, you just announced that you're going to be a putting, expanding a plant in Israel to the tune of about $25 billion after that country said that the government there would give you, I think, $3.2 billion in subsidies for that. So is this just an indication that you're going to go where your capital is treated best? The, uh, you know, overall, I guess there's three things to pull a tease apart there a little bit. And I think part of the optimism in the stock uh, for Intel has been we're getting the process technology back. You know, we said five nodes, four years, this audacious plan to get back to leadership. And as it's coming to life, people are who might have been skeptics are saying, wow, they're making it happen. And I think with that, it's sort of like the products get better, but the foundry opportunity. Right. Where are you in the four year cycle? Well, that? in the four year cycle, we're a little bit over halfway and we've delivered two of those are done. We're going to production with a third of those five in the first half of the year and the other two by the end of the year. So we're on track for something that people said, wow, they can't do this. And we're proving them wrong and building momentum. But then that says, oh, Foundry customers, hey, they want to start taking advantage of that process technology uh, for that. And we're starting to have more momentum of those customers saying, huh, we might have only designed on some of the today's foundries in Asia, TSMC, Samsung, mm -hmm. Global Foundries. But now Intel with leadership process technology, we're interested because we want balanced, resilient supply chains, but then says, where are the factories? And that's the third part of that story is the factories are coming along, you know, the big ones in the U.S., Arizona, New Mexico, Oregon and Ohio, Ohio. the big project. Okay. And uh, here in uh, Europe, we have uh, Ireland, the Magdeburg uh, factory or Poland assembly test and the recently uh, described Israel expansion. So overall, we say we're the only company in the world that has major supply chains for all three areas, the Americas for the Europeans and for Asia. That's a unique capacity and people say, it's an uncertain world, I need resilience and the most critical yeah. element of the supply chain, my semiconductors. Um, can we talk about national security issues as sure. they relate to uh, chips? Uh, Premier of China is here in town. Uh, lots of questions about what can be exported or should be exported to China. Um, there's a whole question about throttling chips, whether the folks in China want to buy throttle chips. What is your position on all of this? Well, we've consistently taken the view that uh, the best way to think about this is the U.S. and the Western companies maximize exports. You know, we want, you know, if I'm going to build lots of factories and be able to fund R&D, I need access to the global market. You know, so let us sell chips uh, globally. You know, manage consistent with your industrial policy where you want technologies to be. 
right. right? Not the products, sell the products everywhere you can, give as much market access in the global uh, community. And, you know, the biggest market is but the US. Idea, but the, idea of, li but the idea of limiting sales uh, of certain speed chips to China puts us in a good position, a bad position. How far back do you think China really is? I mean, I think a lot of people saw those Huawei phones uh, last, uh, last fall, yeah. last summer, and were surprised at how fast uh, the chips inside them actually were. Well, part of that's how much technology access they have, particularly in equipment area. And that's where the partnership between uh, U.S., Europe, and Japan, where do we want to the technologies, the equipment to go? The idea of limiting the highest performance chips, you know, this has been going on for almost 50 years in high performance uh, computing. You know, I think what's been surprising is the inconsistency or the changes in those policies over a short period of time make it impossible for any of us, right, to adjust our businesses and products to meet an ever-changing policy environment. Set the policies consistent with industrial policy, let, our run our, let us run our business against them. And of course, then, you know, the question, as you say, is, OK, where should the lines be drawn, right, right uh, uh, associated President with it? President Biden is very uh, tactful in, in talking about the Taiwan elections o over the weekend. I would imagine you'd be very tactful as well if, if you were to comment on, on things like that. You have to be very careful uh, on what you say. But what, what would you say? And, and there are some people that think... There's only one option left at this point for President Xi, and it's only a matter of time. Well, I think President Xi's been declarative. You know, this is part of uh, China, right? It's a critical role in the supply chain. And, you know, I think the elections sort of say things are probably status quo, which I think is good for the world. China, it, uh, Taiwan is a ch tech hub. He's a staunch, a huge, independent, right? Uh, he, he, right? The, the new president staunchly uh, But a balanced legislator. Uh, balanced legislation that probably keeps a reasonable balance to the view of the policies. So you don't that they think take. anything happens in one year, two years, five years? How no, long? I, I believe there's great risk here by any area of the world being a disproportionate portion of the supply chain for something so critical. Do we have and that's the essence of how much time do we have? How, 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 quickly, how quickly? How quickly do we get to a point where we are? Um, chip independent, if you will. Is what does chip independence years? mean? Is that the end of your four-year cycle? The, you know, what we've said when we started this journey, the U.S. Chips Act, the EU Chips Act, was get to 50-50 by the end of the decade. Meaning 50% of the chips being manufactured in the United States? In the U.S. and in Europe. Is that all chips or just the important Asia? chips? The, you know, uh, particularly the uh, leading edge chips, okay. right, as we uh, move forward. And today, that's uh, less than 20%. So that's a huge shift in the policy. And if we get to 50-50, the world will be a pretty happy place in comparison to the fragility of where we are today.